the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, we come to you to, amen, again, talk about the word of the Lord to some degree. Praise the Lord, and hopefully that you begin to understand how important that it is, amen, to uh, just rest in the name of the Lord. You know what I mean? Just praise the Lord. Just do what you need to do in the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, you know, I wanted to kind of talk about the fact that everybody thinks that they can preach, which means be called out of God. You know what I mean? It, that's what preaching actually is, called by God to do the preaching. Now, people act like God has lost the power, that God doesn't call anybody to preach anymore, that you got to go to theological cemetery. Yeah, I know you probably said another word. You said, did he make a mistake? He said theological cemetery. No, I said exactly what I meant. But Jesus in Matthew chapter 10, he called out disciples. Matthew chapter 10. And he's still doing the same thing today. He called them out in Matthew chapter 10. He's called them out. There's a difference between when God calls you out and somebody else calls you out to do the gospel. You know, because the one that calls you and the one that gives you the papers and the orders is the ones that own you and control you. And I guess that's why a lot of times in a lot of places that people get the gospel mixed up with so many other things like psychology, sociology, and other things because they mix it up with the uh, the mainstream secular humanism of education. Isn't it strange that the same um, people that are in power that took prayer out of school are the same people that are in power to ordain people to preach the gospel? Now, if you understand what I'm saying, so it's like if they took God out of the secular system, all right, and allow the devil, because anytime you take God out of something, you allow the devil to step right in. So wouldn't that be kind of strange to wonder why that same power is over the so-called Christian teaching, godly teaching? There's a way, Proverbs 16, verse 25, I believe, in Proverbs 14, 12, there's a way that seemeth right. So those of you that caught up on the quote-unquote educational system that think everybody has that you can't listen to a person except they're a scholar, except they have a MD or a, a MA or PhD uh, behind their name, uh, some type of, uh, been to some type of world-class teaching, I understand where you're coming from that because that's exactly what the world wanted you to do because Satan is the god of this world, 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. And I'm definitely not saying that there's anything wrong with being educated. That's not what I'm talking about at all. You know, of course, it's a beautiful thing to be educated. Educated is feeding your mind, period. Feeding your mind. Let your mind receive, receive, receive. Like Romans 12 says, be not conformed to this world but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind? Praise the Lord. So we need the teachings of God. Praise the Lord. We need the teachings of God. Uh, what I want to draw out in this little, uh, little bit of talk that I'm going to give right now is the difference between gossip, criticizing, and the gospel. To criticize somebody is to find fault. Just, hey, you did this, you did that. And that's what you hear a lot when you hear the gospel. Because when you have the wrong spirit, you don't hear that, yes, though you may be an adulterer, which is the fault, right? But Jesus healed, which is the healing. You only hear somebody saying you're an adulterer. You only hear the fault. You only hear the criticism. Anybody can criticize. Anyone can criticize. Find fault. There's fault in me. There's fault in you. There's fault all over the world. However, the gospel is not criticizing without healing. It, it shows you your fault. Yes, there's criticalness in it. It's constructive criticism involved in the gospel. But every time somebody points out your fault or criticizes you, which points out your fault, you say, God says you're not supposed to judge. You don't really even know the word because how can anybody even preach the gospel? The gospel is to point out your fault. That's what it is. It's to criticize your fault 
but to allow you to know in the criticalness and of the criticizing of your fault, whether it be adultery, homosexuality, fornication, murder, cursing, uh, destroying your body with uh, sex, drugs, alcohol, and let me call out some things because people try to be slick. Well, he didn't say that. Well, let's start with weed, Maui's, amphetamines, uh, barbiturates, quaaludes, uh, smoking wet, and bombing fluid, um, smoking crack, shooting heroin, snorting dope, whatever, okay? Over drinking alcohol, anything that can hurt your body is a sin. Now that's the fault. But the healing of the fault is that Jesus Christ saved. Jesus Christ delivered. But when you receive an evil spirit, you don't want to hear that nobody told you that you could be healed because you want to stay with the spirit of evil that allows you to do what you want to do. So you don't really want to hear the gospel which says you can be cleaned up. So if you chasing women and you enjoy fornication and adultery or just promiscuous sex or premarital sex or whatever the case may be and I'm not talking about one man dedicated to one woman one woman dedicated to one man um, marriage again I must throw in marriage with a legal with a legal paper and a legal ring or a legal ring that's beautiful in the eyes of the laws of the land but the laws of the land also allow two men to get married and two women to get married so that, even though it may be legal, it's not righteousness. So when you have, when you are just called a boyfriend, when you're just called a girlfriend, but you only have one boyfriend, not many boyfriends, one boyfriend, no on the side sweetheart boys or men, no on the side sweetheart girls or women. You just have one woman that you're dedicated, one man that you're dedicated to. That's married, especially if you're intimate. The intimacy, meaning the penis and the vagina coming together, is the marriage. When somebody say, I'm engaged, that means you're learning each other. You don't even supposed to be having any sex. That means I'm engaging in learning this woman. I'm engaging in learning this man. The moment that you have sex, you you're, now you, you have the engaging upon has been, pro, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not proceeded. Is it trophy? Yes. I, I would think that the word may be proceeded. Uh, well, yeah. Well, if you're engaging to do something, like you said, I'm going engaging to go to the doctor, which I said another way. If you're engaging, you ha you're not there yet. I have an engagement to go somewhere. So you haven't gotten there yet. So if you're engaging to get married, that means you haven't gotten there yet. That means you haven't had the sex yet. Because if you know anything about marriage, if you go to get divorced, they ask you, have you consummated the marriage? Because if you never really consummate, never been sexually intimate with each other, you've never been joined together, penis, vagina, man and woman, together at the two becoming one, you, that's just legal procedures that you went through, but you really didn't consummate the marriage. So when you're engaged, you're supposed to be learning that woman before you have sex with her, learning that man before you have sex with him. When you start having sex with him, you're not engaged anymore. You're engaging in the marriage. You know what I mean? You're proceeding forth in the marriage. The marriage, before you was engaged to get married, that means we're engaged to have sex. Yes, actually, biblically, sex is marriage. Yes, look at the, unless you're committing fornication, which is uh, extra marital sex or premarital sex, either extra marital or premarital. But if you're dealing with one man and one woman. Now, so let's go back to the end. So, the beginning of what we're saying. So, all through the scriptures, people can be criticized. But it's not just about telling you your faults. It's about telling your faults so you can know how to get out of your fault. And that's through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, repent. Now, you know, this unconditional love stuff that people be talking about, I don't know where they got it from. Every one of you that's listening to me at this time that say that you love unconditionally, Where's the first man that you was in love with? Where's he at if you loved him unconditionally? Then, you'll, then, then that means so you didn't leave him because you loved him. And so you say, I didn't stop loving him, but he did thus and so. 
right? All right, well, actually, you stopped loving them. Because when you was loving them, you was with them. Same thing with a man woman. I, I love her unconditionally. Do you really? If you was loving her unconditionally, where is she? Why are you with another female? Why? Why are you with another female if you love unconditionally? When you say you love your children, you don't love them unconditionally. You love them on the condition that that's your child or children. Your parents, you don't love them unconditionally. You love them on the condition that that's your parents, your children, your family, your cousin, your brother, your sister, your uncle, your aunt, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Your friend. If you become unfriendly with them, you lose the love. But so somebody has threw a, a, a monkey rich in the word of God talking about unconditional love. There's no such thing. You don't find unconditional love. If that were the case, as I always say, there's no hell. So we get back to the difference between the gospel, gossip, and criticizing. What is gossip, beloved? What, if, what is gossip? Gossip is just talking, right? Uh, basically just saying a lot of stuff. Because you can say it. you heard it, sounds good, right? But it's not really good for you. Is that right? Gossip. I mean, it's news that you heard. Not necessarily has been validated. Not necessarily has been proven. Right? But uh, it's what you're listening to. Some of you bring that into the house of God. You bring it into your house. And you talk other people's business as if it were the truth. I'm looking up the word gospel. Is it here? Gospel teachings of Christ. So we're not talking about the teachings of Christ, are we? Yeah, I'm pretty sure gossip is G O S S I T. Yes, casual talk about other people's affairs. Chat. Conversation, small talk. Basically, it's being a busybody, nosy, running off at the lips. So this is not what the gospel is. The gospel is not running off at the mouth about other people's business. That's not what we point out the sins or the faults of a person. That's not what it is. That's why everybody in the congregation and everybody in the world think that they can preach the gospel because they think because they have the wrong spirit. They're only only they're not hearing the power of God under salvation. They just hear in the fact that you pointing out somebody's fault. So it's like anybody can do that. Look at the news reporters. Look all over the world. When people become uh, uh, candidates for anything proper and, and professional and uh, for promise, everybody, the, the opponents start digging up gossip and criticizing them, finding their fault. Finding out what other negativities that other people have have on them. That's the same thing that we do in the so-called houses of God and houses of worship that we attend. We become professional gossipers, garbage cans for talking about other people's business. Criticizing, pointing out other people's wrongs but not able to point them to Jesus Christ for the healing. That's why if it, whether it be a preacher from somebody from the top or, or, or a brother or sister fall in the church, all they do, or, or some of you do, is just uh, run their name through the mill. Oh, pastor so-and-so, apostle somebody, bishop somebody, evangelist, prophetess, whatever, teacher, deacon, deaconess, uh, sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so, they not even heard about from your mouth until they do something negative. When they do something negative, now... You know their name, like chewing gum. You ever see people how they just chew gum? Yak, 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 yak. Now you run in your mouth. Yak, 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 yak. But that's not what the gospel is about. The gospel is the message of Christ. And the gospel calls out fault for the message of Christ to come into your life to heal you. So we say something about fornication. The message of Christ is to heal you from fornication and give you one husband, one wife. If you can't live celibate, that means without sexual gratification from the opposite sex, then he, God will give you a wife or a husband. 
man gets a wife, woman gets a husband. No man get another man, no woman gets another woman. That's homosexuality, which is another, what you, some of you would call criticism or fault finding or gossiping or judging. But it's the gospel because you find it in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. You'll find certain things in Galatians chapter 5, the lust of the flesh. And if you're in the lust of the flesh, you can't go to heaven by walking in the lust of the flesh. Even in James, it talks about your loose lips, not controlling your tongue. It tells you that your tongue is a deadly poison. It tells you about judging one another. So the preacher has a call and you don't have a call. You say, God said don't judge. Well, that's right. You're not a preacher. You're not a teacher. Abide in your calling. So you just like, you just like, uh, some of you are just like people that don't obey their fathers and mothers. So if mama drink or daddy drink or smoke and they tell you not doing it, they doing it. You're not an authority. You're a child. And even those of us that are over 21, guess what? You still a child to your parents. I know some of you done got big, have gotten big, and now you think that you can talk back, that you have the right to talk back to your parents as a man or a woman. You don't. You sound silly. You sound demonic when you talk back to your father and your mother. That's what you sound. But it takes the power of God and the discipline of God for you to understand that. Because, because you might be 20, 30, and on up, you think that gives you the right to talk back to your father and the mother. If it wasn't for your father and your mother, you wouldn't be here, but you're so disrespectful as a brat man and a brat woman, low down, low down spirit, that you don't understand that until maybe one day, or if you're going through it already, and you have your own children talking back to you, and then you'll see what it is. When do you get old enough to talk back to God? When then you, can you go to God and say, God, I'm grown? And if you have the audacity to say, well, you just don't do that. Just don't go to God. Well, your father and your mother is like God. that you, Because you can see your father and your mother, but you can't see God. Well, unless God opened up your eyes and you can see God in different aspects. But before you saw God, you saw your father. You saw your mother. So it's just like the scripture says, how can you hate your brother or disrespect your brother who you see and say you love a God whom you never saw? You don't even know God like you know your father and your mother. And you don't and you can you talk about you grown? So if you don't know how to be a child before your father and your mother, you really don't know how to be a child before God. And wow, I'm talking to myself as well. Because that's what keeps me humble. That's what made me think. If you gotta be humble before God whom you don't know, who you call father, your father on the earth, you gotta be humble. You might have to shed a tear and keep your mouth shut. To your earthly father and your earthly mother because they are your father and mother. You may not feel that they're always right, but guess what? They're always your father and your mother. But you so caught up on the gossip and not the gospel. You so caught up on somebody telling you something and call it criticizing you and judging you. Well, judge yourself. Judge yourself. Look at yourself according to the word of God. But what do you critique yourself? What do you criticize yourself? Because if somebody criticizes you according to the word of God, you say, oh, God says don't judge. No, he told you not to judge. But you don't want to hear a word from the Lord. You don't want to hear corrective instruction from the Lord. And who do you think the Lord is going to use? He's going to use people just like he used your father and mother when he was rearing you before you became a grown man or a grown woman. What's wrong, what, what's wrong with much of the world today is people don't know how to follow orders, follow protocol. Father, mother, children. Even if you have mother first and then children, then father, that's out of order. Or you got children, mother, then father. No, you're out of order. It's supposed to be father, mother, and children. And before father is God Almighty because he made man. It was God, Adam, then Eve, then the children. Until Satan showed up, then it was Satan, Eve, then Adam, and put God at the bottom of the list. No wonder things messed up. 
You have to stay with the order. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33, God is not the author of confusion. So who is the author of confusion? Satan. Who is the author of confusion? Satan. It comes to confuse your mind. Twist the word. Maybe start with a little bit of the word, but change the word around. Isn't that what he did with Eve? Oh, no, 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 no. God, he asked Eve what God said. Then when Eve tells him, he said, no, God ain't telling you the truth. He knows when you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you're going to be as a God or as God. That's not what God wanted him to do. In order for you to be wise, you have to become as a fool. That's what the book of Corinthians says. But the Bible says it in uh, the book of James, the third chapter, 14 verse, but if you have bitter, envying, and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. The wisdom descendeth, that kind of wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. Because where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. When you're trying to be like somebody else instead of trying to be what Jesus wants you to be, be the best woman that God wants you to be. Be the best man that God wants you to be. Don't try to be like another man. Don't try to be like another woman. Be like the God in them because the God in them can be the God in you. That's why you come to God. Uh, St. John 1 and 12, to as many as receive him or believe on him, to them gave he the power. So if you believe on Jesus Christ, he'll give you the power to become a great man in God, a great woman in God. And it's not this earthly greatness that we talk about. What you call greatness, what shall it profit a man, Mark 8, 86, to gain the whole world and lose his own tongue? So a lot of you are judging one another, but you don't want nobody to judge you. As soon as somebody says something against you, you uh, start complaining. Don't judge, but you're judging all the time. You don't want nobody gossiping on you, but you gossip on it all the time. You're bringing gossip in the church. Do you know what they said about him? you know what they said about her? You know what they said about them? Do you know what they said about you? Let me ask that a question again. While you're asking, have you heard what they said about him, her, and them, have you heard what they said about you? Praise the Lord. That's why the Bible says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Confess your faults one to another, book of James 5 and 16, and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Sometimes you can't confess your faults to people, even your own brothers and sisters. They act like they love you and care about you, but let them get mad. They throw it all over the family, family reunion. Folks talk about you like a dog before you even get in the family reunion. They done talked about you. Do you know what she did? Do you know what he did? They ain't coming to you with no healing. They just looking at you like, mm, 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 mm. Praise the Lord. What happened to the healing? Church folk, praying folk, praying men and praying women. What happened to believing that God saves and God delivers and God sets free? How have we become critical without the gospel? How have we become judgmental without the healing of the gospel? Judge me, but give me the healing of the gospel. Criticize me, but give me the healing of the gospel. Don't say you in the gospel and leave me on the ground if you know that the devil's killing me. Isn't the gospel to revive? Isn't the gospel to heal? Isn't the gospel to deliver? That's what I'm giving to you. I'm not killing you. If you hear me killing you, you got the devil in you. Because I'm telling you that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus, that's your power to get up. I'm extending to you my hand saying, come on, brother, get up. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the light. Get up, sister. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the light. Let me call it out. Get up, homosexual. 
See, I'm not telling you to stay there. I'm not just saying, ooh, you a homosexual. Ooh, you a liar. Ooh, you a thief. You a fornicator. You a adulterer. No, I'm saying, come on. You can get up in the name of Jesus. Get up in the name of Jesus. You're dying. You're beat down. You're thrown in the towel. You're giving up. Satan has beat you. He has told you you're lost and you're going to hell. You're, you're, you're left for dead. But in the name of Jesus. For God so loved the world. John 3.16. We say it. But do we know what it means? Do we believe it? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son Jesus. He gave Jesus to you. He's given Jesus to you. He's given Jesus to you. So when I call out something wrong, I'm not just judging you or criticizing you. I'm telling you that's not going to take you where you really want to go. You don't want to go to hell. And neither do I. We are not built like that. You know how people say you're not built like that? You're not living... You're not living that kind of life. Huh? You can't live hell. If you thought you go, if you go to hell, you can't take it. You can't take it. You cannot take it. You cannot take it. So I'm offering you the warning. That's what a preacher is to warn you. Hell is coming. Like, didn't the Bible say that just like it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of Son of Man? That's what they probably did to Noah. Talked about Noah, said Noah was judging, Noah was crazy, he was retarded, he was out of his mind. He just went on and kept on building the ark, but telling them, hey, why are you building the ark? It's going to rain, man. Better get ready. It's going to rain. You know what I'm saying? You, you come to God. Get you get right with God. Ask God, can you get on, get on board? Ah, uh, you just a crazy old dude or what, a young dude, whatever he was. They're doing the same thing now. We're so busy partying. You know, we can smoke weed every day, but we don't want to talk about Jesus every day. It's wrong to talk about Jesus if you come in the house and talk about Jesus, but we can smoke some weed, though. We can roll up some blunts, get some blunt wraps and some entourages, and, and, and smoke the weed, smoke the ganja, huh? Smoke that dower. Smoke that, huh? Smoke that loud. Huh? We can do that and be loud, huh? We can drink, drink and 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 drink. Curse and curse and curse and curse and curse. Talk loud and loud and loud and loud. But we can't talk about Jesus because that's out of place. That's too much. No, 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 no. We can't talk about Jesus so much. You just put a little bit of Jesus in. But, you know, that's out of place to talk about Jesus. But there's always a place to smoke a joint, though. Roll up a blunt, though, huh? Always a good time to drink. Always a good time to get a nut, an orgasm. These are the life things that we all understand. But what about Jesus is the way, Jesus is the truth, and Jesus is the life? So what if the Lord comes right while we're enjoying ourselves, smoking that weed, drinking that drink, getting that nut, getting that orgasm, dropping them pills, getting high, main popping, skin line, I mean, Skin popping, main lining, snorting, whatever, or doing it all. Oh, some of us look so greedy. We do everything we can do. Oh, that's criticizing, right? Oh, that's judging, right? Oh, that's gossip, right? Well, what about this part here? Can you hear? You heard all that. Can you hear this part? Man, woman, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus Christ. Ask him to save you. Even if you don't think smoking is wrong, drinking is wrong. Oh, I didn't even say nothing about cigarettes, which you know that it used to say on the cigarette pack. I just went right to the weed, right? I didn't say nothing about black and mild, which is like one black and mild, even though you call it taking the filter out. That's like smoking 20 cigarettes at one time. I didn't say nothing about it. I just went right to the weed. You know, and some people say that's that's like for medicine. Really? Is it in a cake? Is it in the pudding? Are you smoking? Is your body made for smoking? Are your eyes really any better? 
If that be the case, I ought to get me a pound of it right now and just smoke my <laughs> smoke my glasses away. Praise the Lord. But Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ is the way. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. You heard everything else. You hear the criticism. You hear the gossip, so you're saying. You hear the judging, so you're saying. But do you hear? Do you hear? Do you hear? Are you, can God, will you open their ears? Because if God don't open your ears, you're not hearing me. You're hearing me, but you're not hearing me the way you need, it needs to be heard. Can you grab hold of that Jesus Christ will save you from the hell fire? Can you grab hold of that? Can you believe that? Can you call upon it like it's the last thing in life that you need? You're drowning and you need a life saver. You're burnt. You're about to burn and you need a fireman. Jesus is that fireman. He's the insurance that you need. Like the song that says, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory, glory divine, here of salvation, per purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood this is my story this is my song just praising praising my savior oh the day long this is This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Oh, the day long. Jesus is that Savior. Blessed assurance. There's blessed assurance in Jesus. There's blessed assurance in Jesus. Why don't you come to him today? Whatever your religion is, Muslim, Sunni, Shiite, Baptist, Methodist, Jehovah's Witness, Seventh-day Adventist, Church of God in Christ, Pentecostal, Methodist, AME, Zion, Amen, Church of Christ, uh, uh, Church of Christ in God, whatever it is, Catholicism, Catholic, Amen. Whatever you're into, Baptist, whatever it is, you better know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Don't get so caught up under the doctrine get of, of man because he has a master's degree. And yes, God has appointed pastors. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. But the pastors ought to be pointing you directly in the name of Jesus Christ that Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth and Jesus is the life. You must be born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. I still believe in laying on a hand, speaking in tongues. Let's go to Mark chapter 16, real fast. These are the signs that shall follow them believe. So Acts chapter 2, them speaking in tongues is no, diff is no surprise to me. Not when I read the book of Mark that said, I believe it's in Mark chapter 16. And uh, about the 17th or the 18th verse, let me see. Let me go through it real fast. Mark 14, Mark 15, Mark 16. Mark 16. Um, well, first of all, he said to them, and this is a commission to Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Who was he talking to? He commissioned the 12. The 14th verse afterward, he appeared unto the eleven. And, oh, yeah, because Judas had already been crucified, I mean, uh, gone, killed, murdered, deceived, rejected. So he told them, 
the 11th, uh, afterward he appeared unto the 11th as they sat at eating and unbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Right now, God is still calling people to preach. Not man, not the seminary, not the cemetery, but God is still calling people to preach. You can go wherever you want, but if you're going to do it, try to do it the way God said. Whoever called you to do whatever you called to do, you better try to do it God's way, because if it's not God's way, it's going to be tried by the fire. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. See, the Bible says you shall be damned if you don't believe right. And these signs, listen, shall follow them that believe. In the name of Jesus, they shall cast out devils. In the name of Jesus. Not the name of Muhammad, Buddha, uh, uh, Swami, Scooby, Luby, and whatever else. I'm not being funny. I'm saying, it says, and these are the signs that shall follow them that believe. In my name, Jesus is talking. They shall cast out devils. In the name of Jesus. They shall speak with new tongues in the name of Jesus. Now, I can see why they spoke in tongue at Pentecost. Because Jesus said they would do that. These are the signs that believers get. So maybe you ain't believe right. Maybe that's why you didn't get it. I'm just saying. But don't stop believing because there's different levels of believing. Just like the stairway to heaven. Is, I don't know how many ste steps there are to heaven. But use an analogy. If there's 20 steps to your house and you just walk up one step, you got 19 more steps to go, right? So then you go another step. Now 18, 17, 16, 15. So you can keep on making a step. So don't stop believing because you ain't speaking in tongue or because you never cast out a devil. But remember, he was also talking to his disciples that he told to go preach the gospel. But I do know people who haven't preached the gospel who have spoken in tongue as well and who can cast out devils. If you're a mother, you can cast out the devil. You need to cast the devil out your son and your daughter. You don't just have to always bring them to the pastor. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them, and they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. This is believers. It didn't just say to the apostles, it said, these are the signs that shall follow them that believe. So that means if you preach to them, if you preach to them, and they believe what you preach to them in the name of Jesus, so it's not just for the preachers, not just for the apostles and for the prophets, but it's for the ones who they preach to, and they believe the gospel. You got drugs in your house. God can deliver your family from drugs. But do you believe? You can cast the demon out your son, your daughter, your nephew, your niece, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, your wife, in the double shot. Excuse me. In the name of Jesus. Y'all excuse me. I, I'm going to have to probably say this in every, every, every time. I know that you're not supposed to speak in tongue. It's better to speak five words in a language that people understand than in tongue because when you're speaking in tongue, you're speaking under God, First Corinthians chapter 14. But it comes over me sometimes, so I don't make apology for speaking in tongue. I make apology to you for not understanding what I'm saying. But praise the Lord, may my spirit get me even closer and stronger to God to get this message out to anyone that will hear that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. May he save you. May you not get the message that is criticism. See, when the devil gets inside you, now going back to different things, like if you take a drink, right? If I go get my cup now, all right, here I got a, 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 some water right here, right? And if I drink the water, ah, that water has become a part of me. When you have sex, it becomes a part of you. When you smoke weed, it becomes a part of you. When you curse, it's a part of you. When you drink, it's a part of you. Drop pills, it's a part of you. Shoot dope, it's a part of you. You snort, it's a part of you. Whatever you do, it's a part of you. And you do it because, so if there's a spirit behind what you do, it's either life or death. Now, the clearest thing is water. Even soda becomes a part of you. Juice becomes a part of you. But there's ingredients in that that become the party. So if it's not just natural water, it might have some side effects with the chemicals in it, right? So now, it becomes a party in you and your body starts feeding on you. 
and it becomes like you need it. Even if you don't need it, your body says, oh, I like that. Sugar is one of the worst poisons that they say for you, refined sugar. But it tastes good. Anything tastes good when it's sweet, right? Sin is good when it's sweet. A lot of things that's sweet to you is not good for you. All I'm trying to do is get you to understand that what Satan has done has become a part of your life and allowed you to think that you, it's sweet, it's good. It's good. It's good. Sin is good. That's what Satan has got us to think. Sin is good, but it'll take you to hell. So I just come to remind you, as I remind myself, that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and we need to call on Jesus as much as we can and be delivered in the name of Jesus. All right? Be delivered in the name of Jesus. Be delivered in the name of Jesus. May you be delivered in the name of Jesus. Now, if you heard anything that you didn't like, if I said homosexual and you didn't like that, if I said fornicator and you didn't like that, if I said adulterer and you didn't like that, if I said liar and you didn't like that, if I said smoker weed and you didn't like that, if I said drinker and you didn't like that, dropping Maui pills, amphetamines, uh, barbiturates, uh, shooting Hiron or snorting dope, pee dope, uh, sniffing, uh, whatever I said that you did not like. Hope you like this, and even if you don't, Jesus will save you. Ask him to save you today. Ask him to save you. Ask him to deliver you. Ask him to set you free. Just try it, Lord Jesus, and keep on saying it. Lord Jesus, save me. Lord Jesus, save me. Do you believe on the story of Jesus Christ? It was handed down just like one and one is two, and you see how often you use mathematics, every coin in your pocket, whether a lot of money or, or uh, less money, but you learn to count, and it's a, 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 a method for life, right? It's a method. Mathematics is a formula. Well, Jesus Christ is the formula for life. It's a formula for life, true life, life above life, life abundantly. You can have life. The devil's job is to kill you. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is Jesus Christ. The devil comes to rob you, to kill you, and destroy you, but Jesus said, I come. I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Why might? Because you have to accept him. You have to accept him. Let's pray. Most Heavenly Father God. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray that you touch every hearer. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And as they hear, may they hear your word and not my word. May they hear your divine call and come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. God, help us to be saved. Help us to be delivered. Help us to be sanctified and filled with your glory. Help us to walk. Amen. Amen. In your presence. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Ducking around every trap that Satan has for us. God, we need you like we never needed you before. Touch that man. Touch that woman. Touch that boy. Touch that girl. Touch that family. In the name of Jesus. God, we call on you right now. In the name of Jesus. We need you. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for what you've already done. From our, our cradle, from our father's loins, to our mother's womb, to this very present hour right now, in the name of Jesus. God, we ask that you touch in the name of Jesus. Move, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We know that you don't need us to be repetitious. But God, I just summon you that you bow down your head. Touch us, God. In the name of Jesus, bind the devil that comes to rob, that comes to kill, and comes to destroy. But God, in your presence, bind the devils in our lives. Drug abuse, alcohol abuse, sex abuse, violence and domestic violence abuse, uh, human abuse, uh, amen, talking wrong abuse, uh, spiritual abuse, uh, come in our lives uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, we need you right now. Uh, oh, Holy Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, we call on you right now. Uh, please, uh, please, God, uh, have mercy. Uh, walk in our homes. Uh, bind demons uh, that have come uh, to set themselves up in our homes. Uh, not only 
in our place where we live at, but in our minds, in our temples, in the name of Jesus. Walk in our bedrooms, walk in our kitchens and living rooms, walk in our basements, walk on the second and third floors, or how many floors we have. But walk around the backyard, walk around the area where we live at God, and touch our neighbors in the name of Jesus. We need you right now. Bind Satan, the prince of the powers of the air. Oh, great Jehovah, we call on your name in the name of Jesus. We need you right now. Oh, my God, help us right now. Wipe away our tears. Move our wickedness. Move our weakness in the name of Jesus. Every phobia and every fear and replace it with your Shekinah glory. Help us to help one another in the name in the name of Jesus. We need you. Oh God, right now. Right now, God. Can you help us, Lord? Can you lift up? Can you lift us up? Hallelujah. We're falling. We're in the miry clay, but we need you. Oh, oh God. We need you right now. My God, lift us up. Turn us around. Place our feet on solid ground. Yeah, my God, in the name of Jesus, touch that woman right now. Move on that sickness. Let her know you're still a miracle worker. In the name of Jesus, touch that man. Touch that listener right now. Let them know you're still a healer. In the name of Jesus, bind Satan. Satan, we bind you. In the name of Jesus, we speak to you, Satan, whichever way you come, whatever name you disguise under, hallelujah, whatever your controlling spirit is, we direct, we direct the spirit of God in the power of Jesus towards you and speak you out of that man, out of that woman, in the name of Jesus, God, let your spirit flow, hallelujah, let your healing virtue go forth, let somebody be healed and delivered in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This we ask, God, by your mercy and by your grace. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? We're not here. No preacher is really criticizing you or gossiping on you. They're telling you what the gospel says. May you hear the gospel truth and come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. As the song says, and I'm gone. Not that I'm such a good singer, but I just like to push forth. If anything, if I'm going to be heard saying something, let me say something for Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. They doing all types of uh, uh, surveillance and watching folks anyway. So let me say something for Jesus. Out of anything that I ever said wrong or done wrong, let me say something for Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come right now, come to Jesus, come to Jesus, why don't you come right now, he will save you, Jesus will save you. Jesus will save you. He'll save you right now. Jesus will save you. Jesus will save you. He'll save you right now. Don't you doubt him. Don't you doubt don't doubt him. Don't you doubt him. Don't doubt him. No, no, not now. Don't you doubt him. Don't you doubt him. Don't doubt the Lord. Don't doubt him. Don't doubt him now. Praise the Lord. He'll save you. If you allow him to save you, incorporate that into your life. You incorporated other things. You heard other people. You saw other people. And then you stepped out and did things yourself. Amen. But now, why don't you call upon the name of Jesus Christ and ask him to save you. God bless you. And may heaven smile upon you. Be our prayers. 
or in our joy as well as our sorrow, God definitely has been good to us no matter what's going on. Amen. From the south to the north to the east to the west, may God, amen, richly smile upon you and may you come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Miss hell. Help somebody else miss hell. Amen. Tell them hell is hot. You can't stand it. Come on to Jesus. Amen. Let the fire man, let the insurance man save you. And that's Jesus Christ. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you.